is a presentation of Fox Sports. We are Fox Sports. We are Ohio. One play, one check swing, one missed call can change the tide of a game. And it happened in the first inning for the Indians' benefit last night. The result was the tribe's fourth straight win. And to make it five in a row, they'll have to beat one of the most electrifying pitchers in the game and 24 year old Jose Fernandez. Trevor Bauer is always up for a challenge, and he'll go toe to toe with the Marlins ace next on Sports Time Ohio. Beautiful Saturday evening in downtown Cleveland. The Indians continue the homestand, try to keep their win streak alive. Can they make it five in a row? We're about to find out as they take on the Miami Marlins in game two of this three game weekend series. Hi again, everyone. Matt Underwood alongside Rick Manning. Bad calls are a part of the game, and they've been a part of the game since there have been umpires, from Don Denkinger to Jim Joyce to Andy Fletcher last night. I'll tell you what, the Indians took advantage of it, though, when you get a break like that. Instead of two outs and nobody on, it was a 3-2 pitch. Santana should have been out at second. Kipnis should have been out on the strikeout, but they said they didn't see it. He checked his swing. It was a walk. He went to first base, and then Kashner had to throw an extra 20 to 25 pitches in the inning. The Indians had one hit in that inning they pushed three runs across and it got them off to a great start last night and it propelled them to go on and win the baseball game. Afterwards Don Mattingly was livid over the blown call. He said we're trying to get into the playoffs. We're trying to make a run. They don't care if they get it right or not. They're just caring about protecting themselves. I got a feeling he's going to get a letter from the commissioner's office. Well he doesn't care. I mean he's trying to protect his team. They're trying to win ball games and I want to see if he takes a lineup card out tonight as the retiring Vin Scully would say. Winners tell jokes, losers cry foul. <laughs> Let's take a look at tonight's pitching matchup. It'll be Trevor Bauer for the Indians, and he's going up against one extremely tough customer in Jose Fernandez. Yeah, well, I remember a game this year he matched up with Max Scherzer, matched him zero for zero. Scherzer had a no hitter going into the seventh inning. Bauer ended up winning that ball game in Washington, so he's looking forward to it. He likes to match up against good pitchers, and he's going to do that tonight. He's six and two in interleague play, and he's going to be matched up against the big right hander, uh, Jose Fernandez, who set the strikeout record for the uh, Marlins franchise in one year and this guy's got an explosive fastball an outstanding slider we saw him one time in his rookie season he punched out 14 Cleveland Indians in eight innings so this guy you have to take advantage when you get any base runners on do what you have to do but I think Bauer's going to have to put zeros on the board first should be an entertaining matchup tonight as the Indians try to keep their win streak alive against the Miami Marlins we'll be back with tonight's first pitch plus we'll check in with Andre Nadu as a story of the special bond between Francisco Lindor the Indians and D. Gordon of the Marlins. Cleveland Indians baseball is brought to you by W.B. Mason, the official office supplier of the Cleveland Indians. By McDonald's, I'm loving it. And by your local Toyota dealers, visit buyatoyota.com. Toyota, let's go places.
we're looking forward to facing him. We're looking forward to um, um, competing against him. You know, that's as an athlete, as a um, performer, that's what, that's what we look for. You know, we look for for competition, and that, that's what it's all about. You know, I, I'm looking forward to to that challenge, and uh, we'll see who comes out victorious, whether it's him or us. That's the hear right sounds of the game. Francisco Lindor talking about facing Jose Fernandez of the Marlins. Let's go down to the field now where we're joined by Andre Nadu as more on Lindor's relationship with another Miami Marlin player. That is D. Gordon, the second baseman, all-star second baseman for the Marlins. Both of these guys have struck up a relationship because they work out in the offseason with Hall of Fame shortstop Barry Larkin. Larkin put these two guys together last offseason. And last night, Francisco told me, really, the one guy that motivates them more than anyone else right now is D. Gordon. They're both the young middle infielders who try to use their speed to irritate teams, but also want to be gold glove players. He says it's fun to be on the field with him. They even went as far as when the Cavs won the championship, Lindor bought a LeBron James jersey and sent it to him personally and signed it and said the real city of champions is here in Cleveland. <laughs> well we'll see how they uh, match up here tonight. It should be an entertaining game because you've got two pitchers. If they're on their games then it's going to be difficult for the hitters to sustain any kind of momentum offensively. So that should make it interesting because Rick in a game like that it could be a stolen base who can right. get the extra base. On a, on a knock if you're at first going to third. When you when you face a guy like Fernandez and look this guy's one of the top pitchers in the game you know you put him in the top ten he pitches better at home than he does on the road but if he's on his game he's not going to give you many opportunities. He has a wicked slider. Uh, he's second in the National League behind Max Scherzer when it comes to punch outs he has two hundred and nineteen. So this guy he's going to be tough and you look forward to facing the, the toughest pitchers in the game so. It'll be uh, it'll be something and Trevor Bowers the one guy that's going to have to put zeros up until the offense can score. Well Don Mattingly is putting the lineup card up in the dugout and Trevor Bauer is on the field taking the hill to get things started tonight for the Indians. Let's take a look at the lineup that he will face brought to you by Spitzer Automotive after D Gordon it's Ichiro and then Martin Prado. Third best batting average in the National League. Kristen Yelich, who was 0 for last night. JT Real Muto, who hit a home run for the Marlins in last night's game. Derek Dietrich, the local kid back home playing at Progressive Field professionally for the first time in his career. Destin Hood, Jeff Mathis, and Adani Echeverria rounded out. And Trevor Bauer is our uh, Honda starting pitcher tonight for the Tribe, making his 23rd start. He's looking for win number 10 to join the crowd man he's at nine and six with a 373 ERA. Now he's making his first career appearance against the Marlins but he's made six career appearances against NL East opponents he's three and oh with a 249 ERA uh, against this division. So we'll see what Trevor has for the Marlins and we'll set the defense behind him which is brought to you by Jeep. It looks like this in the outfield. It'll be El Monte in left. Naquin is at center. Chisholm all over and right. Ramirez at third. Lindor at short. Kipnis is at second. Santana at first. Perez doing the catching. Mark Riffiger has the plate. He ejected the Marlins' first base coach from the game last night. Joe West, your crew chief, is at first. Andy Fletcher is at second. Nick Lund's down at third. And there is the Marlins first base coach He's Perry Hill who was ejected by Ripperger late in the game last night because he was upset that Andy Fletcher was complaining to players on the field that the Marlins were making too many visits to the mound catcher to pitcher and that they were slowing the pace of the game down. So he was upset with that and Ripperger said look I, I don't know why you're complaining to me about it but I've had enough and you can go watch the rest of this from the clubhouse. One ball one strike to count on D Gordon. Needless to say it was a frustrating night for the Marlins after that first inning. Swung out and missed. Trevor Bauer gets ahead of D Gordon one and two. Gordon just two hits in his last twenty two at bats. Well he certainly changes the attitude when he gets on base the way he can run. But it looks like you can overpower him up into the bat. I mean I know he's not swinging like he really can. 
but he's been tardy on fastballs. I think if you slow it down, you help him out. Bauer shaking off a number of times. We saw it with Abraham Almonte. You miss that much time. It takes a couple of weeks to really get any kind of rhythm going at the plate when you've missed that much of the season. Yeah. You sit out 80 games. Yeah, he came in, in the tail end of July. So he's been playing for just over a month. And the 2 2 fastball nice. got him. Run him up inside corner. Take a look at it on our Nissan pitch track. It's a nice fastball. It's a two seamer. It has a little movement coming back on the plate, and it just locks up Gordon. It's a very good pitch, has plenty of plate. So his first strikeout will be a call. That will bring up Ichiro Suzuki, 27th now on baseball's all time hit list. 3,013 hits. I haven't heard or read anything that would indicate he's going to ride off into the sunset after this either. I, I'm not sure that they know either. I mean, they still think he can help this team, you know, off the bench, pinch hit. Even when they they get back to full strength and in the National League as often as you pinch hit, why wouldn't they? Yeah, that's what has made him great for so long. You get him down on the count, but he can just drag that bat through the hitting zone. Wait, 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 and still just flick one the other way. Well, he keeps his, his, his hands back, you know, and then he just slaps it the other way. You can see the numbers on each row. 30th player to hit 3,000, get 3,000 hits. But yeah, and he did it with a triple. Only Paul Molitor did that before. He's been very impressive since uh, he stepped foot on the Major League Baseball field here up in Seattle. Watch his hands. They stay back, although the body may get out front sometimes, but boy, he knows how to work it and how to handle it. Strike to the outside corner on Martin Prado, who was two for four with the double last night. He's the third best hitter in the National League with that 318 average. Yeah. He's having a nice year. He's got very good plate coverage, hit a double last night to right field, short hop the wall. Up and in. The 2 1. A bit outside. Three balls and a strike. What's interesting, too, about this Marlins club Prado, Yelich, Real Muto, three of the best hitters average wise on the road. Not to mention overall, but specifically on the road is where these guys really do a lot of their damage. Yeah, they have the best batting average on the road of any team in baseball. For whatever reason, but you know, that's why they they're around that 500 mark. These three guys are a big reason why. Real Muto's number one, Prado's number two, Kristen Yelich, who's on deck, is number six in road batting average in the National League. The string is out. Each hero you would expect will be off. I would expect him to run. He does, and it's ball four. Yeah. 
This was the 3,000th hit in the major league career of Ichiro. At first, it looked like it was going to be out, but then it's off the wall, and he glides in easily with a triple. Yeah, a three bagger for 3,000. Here is Christian Yelich. And he smokes it. Deep center going, and it's going to short hop the wall. Coming around third and scoring is Ichiro. On his heels is Prado, and a two run double for Yelich. And the Marlins jump out early. Well, Yelich had a tough day yesterday. He struck out his first three times. And, uh, let's see what this is. A changeup, maybe? It sure is. And he left it upstairs, and Yelich pounds it to right center field in the gap. So he gets his 34th double, gets his 85th RBI, and uh, Miami comes out playing from in front tonight. They scored two in the first. Still just one out. And JT Real Muto to the plate now for the Marlins. And a strike call. Seventh overall in batting average with that 312 mark in the NL. And he had three hits last night, including a two run homer. And now he softly serves one in the right field. Yelich will have to stop at third. But the Marlins have come out swinging it tonight. That looked like a cut fastball. Real Muto stays on, drives it just over the head of Kipnis, not hit all that hard toward the end of the bat. But it falls in for a base hit, so three hits in the inning. He struck out the leadoff man, Gordon. And has not gotten an out since. He had Ichiro down on the count one and two. He singled, then the walk to Prado on a three-two pitch, and then Yelich uncorked the two-run double. And now Real Muto with a single to right. Here's Derek Dietrich from nearby Saint Ignatius High School. And he swings at the first pitch and sends it deep to center where Naquin is there. He'll make the catch tagging and coming home to score is Christian Yelich and the Marlins lead three to nothing as Dietrich drives home a run in his first plate appearance back home in Cleveland. Come back and uh, return the favor. What the Indians did last night in the bottom half of that first, putting a three on the board. Here's Destin Hood. Was an Indians minor leaguer a year ago. Last night, collected his first major league hit. It was a double. He also came up later in the game, got a, a single. So two for four in his major league debut. And his folks were here to see it in person. Slowly tapped toward first. Santana's there. Long flip. Bauer couldn't find the bag. He missed it. I think he missed it. And now he's Bauer's saying he got it. He's saying that he kicked it with his toe. Joe West didn't see it. We might get a review. Well, if he's the Indians about it. can confirm that there's a, a good enough video shot of it. Well, it was a it was a high flip from Santana. He's telling uh, you know that he kicked the bag, so they're going to go take a look at it. He did kick it, Arch. I don't know that he beat him to the bag though. That's going to be the other question. He misses it. Well, I don't know where he kicked it at. That's I don't Here's know. Here's the angle. Missed it by three inches. He, he did it. get it. He got it. He sure did with his toe. Now, did it beat? Did yeah. it beat it? That's the question. I think he did. 
I didn't I didn't think initially that he got it with the toe on the front part of the bag. I thought he grazed the top of the bag and that's why I wasn't sure that his foot was there before the runner. But now that I see he kicked the front of it. Yeah he beat him. OK. I mean everybody's looking at the scoreboard and they see it. I agree with you that looks like that toe got there before the foot came down on the base. I mean it's close but I think it clearly shows you know, he was called safe so they're going to have to absolutely see some evidence to overturn it. This is the this is the best look the conclusive evidence I think there it yeah. is. OK. And you talk about by a, a whisker or an eyelash. There it is. He is out. And that'll end Bauer the was right. But the Marlins strike early. They score three. The Indians are coming to bat. Progressive Coco Crisp in his return to the Indians will bat leadoff. He'll be the DH tonight. Jason Kipnis will bat second. Francisco Lindor, the number one home batting average in the American League, hitting third. Then it's Santana Ramirez and Chisholm Hall, Abraham Almonte, Tyler Naquin, and Roberto Perez. And Jose Fernandez will be our Hyundai starting pitcher for the Marlins, making his 26th start this year, 13 and 7. He's second in the National League, 219 strikeouts. Low ball one. 1-0 one oh in his career against the Indians. Coco Chris swings, drives the first pitch deep left. That is going to be off the wall. And he's screaming in the second base with a leadoff double. Welcome home Coco. Well, he figured he would get a fastball and he's not going to spot it. It's his 25th double of the year and he drove it to left center field. So right back come the Indians. That's, he left that fastball trying to get strike one. Coco no stride. Really just got his hands through the baseball. Short hops the wall. So a good start. The leadoff double. As difficult as it was for him to leave Oakland, because essentially that's home for him, he was thrilled that this is where he ended up going. And a breaking ball in for a strike. Well, he was a player that was a 10 and 5 guy, 10 years in the big league and 5 with the same club with being Oakland. 
So he could veto any trade that he didn't like. Jason Kipnis sucks one. Deep right. Suzuki's out of room. It's out of here. Two batters in, and the Indians have two on the board. Now that's a response in a very big way. Boy, Kipnis, he found that fastball down and in into his nitro zone and put a good swing on it. And bingo. There's a two run shot his 22nd give up 74 ribbies and back on the Indians it's a three to two game. A stun Jose Fernandez. It's only his 12th home run allowed. You know Arch all season long. Terry Francona's had Carlos Santana, Rajay Davis in that leadoff spot trying to. All of a sudden, here comes Coco Crisp. Maybe he is the guy that fits nicely into the top spot in that lineup. Well, he's done it before. He's a veteran. He knows uh, he's not going to change his batter, but he knows what it takes to lead off, that's for sure. And it couldn't have turned out any better tonight. His first at bat, he doubles. And a foul right back to the screen by Lindor. That manager would always like to say, we have options. It's always nice to have options. Well, adding Coco Crisp gives Terry Francona one more weapon to use in a variety of ways. The 0 2, because he doesn't have to start a game, but he's available off the bench to pinch run, to pinch hit. Switch as you hitter. said, as a veteran, he can do a lot of yeah, things. Yeah, he off knows. The bench. You know, yeah, he can do whatever you ask him to. Because he's been there and he's done it before. The one two to Lindor. Chops it fun. Well, that is absolutely huge for the Indians to come right back and answer. Yeah, they respond. You know, Fernandez it, it, on the road, he has struggled a little bit. Three and five with an ERA of four. Just missed down and in at 97 miles an hour. But our set last time out, I think that was a road start against the Mets, and he was pretty good. Yeah, although he did he didn't get a decision. Six three hit innings, no runs. Yeah. Six punch shots. He ended up losing the game, but he did his part, that's for sure. And in the start before that, he went seven innings, six hits against uh, Kansas City. Did not allow a run. Got the win in that game. The 2 2. And foul back. We got a nice at bat going right here by Lindor, making him work to get him out. Isn't that the way it always kind of works out? And who knows what happens the rest of the way here, but we're talking up big pitching matchup, dual lookout, 3 2 already in the first inning. Well, and that's what it takes sometimes. You got to get guys early, the good starters. Yeah. You get them early before they settle in. Because there will come a time where both these guys will settle down and then pitch much better, I'm sure. Payout pitch. And again, Lindor making him wait. Look at Fernandez. Did you see him bark? He turned and barked something after Lindor fouled that pitch off. He is absolutely frustrated right now. Yeah, he's falling off some of his best, best pitches. He thinks he's you make good pitches, you get an out. Look at this. Lindor at sucks this. one to center field. That's gonna get down all the way to the wall. Yelich chases it. Lindor pulls into second with a double. And the first three have all reached, and what an at bat by Francis. I was gonna say, you mark that at bat down and, and put a, a check next to it because that, that's about as good as you can get against a tough pitcher. He finally made a mistake and caught some middle of the plate. And Frankie just drove it into the gap in right center field. His 25th double, but that was a terrific at bat. Boy, you wanted it there. He wanted it. Three hits, all extra base hits for the Indians. Two doubles in the home run.
Keys to the game brought to you by Wayside Furniture. They're going to have to match something. I don't know about well, zeros. Maybe we can match threes for threes <laughs> instead of zeros for zeros because if they can get them over and get them in, that's exactly what they'll do. And they haven't missed anything so far from Jose Fernandez. They're three for three, and now Carlos Santana takes a strike. Santana last night walked three times, giving him 77 walks on the year, third most in the American League. Well, that the was dirt. like last year we caught Carlos. We've seen him for so long. The one, uh, the one a day. It's like a vitamin. <laughs> one a day. That seems like he gets one every game. Get him over. Tying run at second. Change up. Popped up. And Yelich, the center fielder, makes the catch. One down. Look at Lindor bumping into T. Gordon. Watch him. <laughs> Talking to Derek Dietrich. You got to have fun when you play this game. You compete, you're intense. But you got to have fun at the same time. No doubt. Enjoy the game. You play it the way it should be, and you'll, you will have fun. Jose Ramirez. <laughs> Told you the Marlins have three of the top six road batting averages in the National League, including number one and number two. Conversely, the Indians, Francisco Lindor is number one in the American League in home batting average, and Jose Ramirez is number five. This a routine play for D. Gordon, two down. Tying run to third. Let's set the uh, Marlins defense now that we have an opportunity and we're settled in a little bit. In the outfield, it'll be Hood, Yelich, and Ichiro. And on the infield, Prado at third, Echeverri at the short, Gordon is at second, Dietrich at first, and Mathis is behind the plate. And Lonnie Chisenhall, the batter, with two down and that runner or tying run at third base. Fastball at 97. Last night, 0 for 3, but he walked and an RBI ground out, scored a run. Fly ball center field, Yelich coming hard. He's there, and the inning is over. The first three for the Indians all reach. Coco and Kipnis score. It's a 3 2 game after an inning.
act in this ball game. 3-2 Miami second inning. We'll see which pitcher can maybe settle in now. A smash to second and a good play by Kipnis. As he picks it clean and throws out Jeff Mathis one away. Stood out to Andre. Well, the one thing that had Terry Francona hyped up is that he loves that Trevor Bauer gets pumped up for these type of matchups. Trevor is known for the last three days. This is the guy he was going to go against. And for whatever reason, he likes competition. We all know that he's a little bit different. But when he saw who he was pitching against, he got fired up. And it should be interesting to see how he settles in after that first inning. Well, Andre, this game might come down to who flat out can compete because both starting pitchers took their lumps in inning number one. So whether it's a case of maybe not having your best up or just getting through that first inning. Danny Echevarria swings and fouls it off. In addition to the Marlins ability to hit on the road. They also have the number one batting average in baseball in interleague play. Oh, oh nail Bauer caroms right to Kipnis and there are two down. Bauer gives a quick thumbs up. I'm not sure where that caught him but it quickly deflected glove. he says right off the top of his glove. It scared him. I know that. Uh, but he deflected it. it. It was coming right back at the old squash. No he got the glove up. Boy, that ball was a, a direct hit, and he deflected it. Yeah, he's very lucky on the breaking ball. Boy, he stayed right up the middle with it. That goes one for three. My goodness, very lucky to Trevor. And two quick outs now as D. Gordon steps in, showing bunt, taking a strike. But yeah, Arch Miami batting 298 as a team in interleague play this year. Maybe they want to go and play in Tampa <laughs> as their home. Uh, something tells me they don't. <laughs> they go one, two, three here in the second. The Indians go right back to work when we return. The bottom of the second the Indians bring the lumber here in inning number two with the bottom third of the order Abraham Almonte Tyler Naquin and Roberto Perez. Foul right back.
fastball and a change up and then went to that slider and he never started so I don't know if he wants to go fastball away breaking ball he gets ahead of Almonte 0 and 2. Jose Fernandez, according to the guys at Inside Edge, is the number one pitcher in all of baseball when it comes to putting hitters away when he gets to two strikes. And Almonte shoots a foul. Well, I think that's why the Indians want to be aggressive against him in today's game. If he's that good, you know, when you're as good, if not better than Kluber, Carrasco, when those guys get to two strikes, and even Bauer. They were ranked in the top three in the American League. Down on the dirt. You don't want to miss your fastball early in the count if you get one. Jose Fernandez has struck out better than 55% of the batters he has faced. He gets to two strikes. <laughs> the time had been called, and Fernandez. Didn't want to just stop, so he ended up lobbing it in there. Corey Kluber is on that list, by the way. He checks in at 49.6 percent. As far as strikeouts go, yep. when you get to two strikes, uh -huh. I was talking batting average. Yeah, when you get to two strikes. Now, in that first inning, the only hitter that got to two strikes, I believe, was Francisco Lindor, and he had a great at bat. Yes, and he ended did. Up finishing it off with a double. Every guy in that first inning hit a fastball. Up and in, full count. Top three on that list Jose Fernandez, Steven Strasburg, Max Scherzer. No surprise there, no. is there? No, there really isn't. Breaking ball pulled to second base. One down. Well, you go back to that first inning, and there's the well, 0 1 or 1 0 pitch to Coco. A fastball up and away he stayed on. He gave Kittness a ball down in his zone that he drives out of the ballpark. He can't believe it. And then after a long at bat, nine or ten pitches, Lindor found the fastball down too. And that's a wake up call for you when you're a pitcher that normally you see a lot of swings and misses. Well, they are swinging and they are connecting so far off Jose Fernandez. Let's go down to Andre. Well, Matt, as you talk about the numbers Fernandez has put up, check out this one. And it's changed a little bit since the All Star break. Fernandez has relied more on his breaking ball than anything else. It's accounted for 39% of his pitches since the Midsummer Classic compared to 32% in the first half. Hmm. Fernandez has thrown more than 100 more curves, 157, than any pitcher in baseball this season. Oh, Naquin smokes one deep left center. Off the wall. It hit the building out of town scoreboard, and he'll roll into second base with a double. And that was an absolute frozen rope to deep left center field. Double number 17 for Naquin. Well, when you get one, you can't miss it, and he did. That's a fastball up, man. He normally, that's how they try to pitch Naquin is up. But he was able to get on top of this ball and stay on it. He didn't try to pull it. And you're right, that ball was hit about as hard as you can hit it, and it goes directly off the wall. Naquin is 17th double, and there's a nice swing. You can see the eyes and everything trying to take it that way. So, again, the tying run in scoring position for Cleveland. And Roberto Perez takes a strike. Indians four for eight so far off Fernandez. Fair ball down the right field line. Naquin scores the tying run. Perez headed for second base. He's in safely with a double. Five hits the first time through the lineup, four doubles and a homer, and they're not missing the heater. That was a fastball up. 
and uh, Perez is able to just slap it down the right field line. It stays fair. He hustles his way into second. And what a first time through. They're back to even now. Top of the order. Here's Coco Crisp. And we may see more of those sliders Andre was talking about now that they're hitting the fastball. He may go 75% sliders. Coco Crisp. Made his major league debut with the Indians back in 2002. And spent the 03, 04, and 05 seasons with the tribe. He was traded to Boston after that season. Played for Terry Francona. Won the world championship with the Sox. And spent one year with Kansas City in 09 before. Landing in Oakland, where he's been a key member of that ball club for years. Down and in. Yeah, I remember when Coco came up. He really played a great left field. Yeah, here. You know, because we, 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 Grady wasn't even here then, was he? Uh, right when Coco got here, not quite. But he played an outstanding left field. Milton Bradley, that too was in center. Coco was rattling off. I mean, his recall was pretty impressive the other day. He, he remembered just about everybody he played with in those er early years in Cleveland. I asked him, I said, what, did, what were the initial memories that were triggered when you walked into the clubhouse for the first time? He said, I remember Ben Broussard trying to beatbox with his, uh, with his radio. <laughs> yeah. And you know he remembered all the players you know Milton Bradley CC Sabathia so many good players were part of that team that came so close in 05 93 wins he recalled that and how painful it was to be that close to getting to the playoffs and falling just a game short that year well, here comes another great at bat against Jose Fernandez they're flipping it over for the second time here. We're in the bottom half of the second inning. Three-two pitch. Time. Someone, yeah, you know what? I, and I it was the catcher something. Mathis that called it. And Fernandez is—he's so mad he wants to fight both his catcher and him. You know, I thought something was weird there. It looked like there was going to be a timeout. Watch, watch his own catcher. He called it. He did call it, and the umpire gave it to him. There's nothing you can say. And he he's he's tapping his chest, saying, "Look, it, it was my fault." And Coco said, "I thought I heard something." He did. That was okay. They got it right. And Fernandez still isn't happy about it. No, he's not. Not the way he's gone through that lineup the first time. Five for nine. The Indians are all extra base hits. Got him with the change. Yes, he did. That's when he's going to have to start throwing. But besides that fastball and slider, that changeup has been effective for him. That's his first strikeout. There's the changeup, and he got the check swing. Now here's Jason Kipnis' first time up. Low fastball. And he golfed it out of here. So that with two down and a runner at second. Another chance for Kipnis. And a breaking ball in for a strike. Oh, well, that appeared to dip low, but called a strike. You know, going back to that pitch to Coco, Rick, if I'm Coco and on the timeout, you see that curveball come in. You know it's a breaking ball. And time was called. So now you're thinking he's not going to throw it again. He's probably going to come with a fastball, and that's why the changeup was really, I think, a good selection. Well, Even though the location wasn't great, he was yeah, looking he, fastball and it just fooled him. Hey. 
He's, I think that's his go to pitch now. These guys have, have shot him away from the heater because everybody has hit it for the most part. So now you take something off. He's trying to make an adjustment on the fly here in the second inning. Another breaking ball, but Kipnis did get a piece of it. Breaking ball in the dirt. They don't need to throw to first. They do. And the inning is over. But the Indians have come back to tie it. Back to back doubles by Naquin and Roberto Perez. It's 3 3 after two. And Ichiro Suzuki will lead off for Miami as Trevor Bauer goes back to work. He's retired five in a row since four straight reached in the first. And the Marlins scored their three runs. Up high, ball one. Defensive gem turned in by Carlos. Boy, there was no time but just to dive. Ichiro hit a changeup, and I mean smokes it. And there goes Santana just ranging to his right on the backhand side. Look at he just got his footwork to where he could push off, dive for that ball, and made a wonderful catch. They're hitting the ball pretty hard off Bauer. We've seen a little bit of everything already here tonight. And now Martin Prado. Pitch that he's going to have to start throwing for strikes is that fastball because they've been on his cutter, his changeup, 
and his off speed pitches. The opposite of what the Indians are doing to Fernandez. They're on his fastball. There's a changeup. Broken bat bouncer to short. Windor throws him out to a way. Our great clip of the game from last night. <laughs> Carlos Carrasco. Yeah, can't get much better than the way Carlos pitched the ball last night. Seven and a third, 11 strikeouts. Shutout baseball. Gave up six hits, walked. Yeah, he said he wanted to pitch better than he did in his last start for Texas, and boy, did he ever. Worked hard on the side in between that start before his one last night, and one walk, 11 punch outs, six hits, and seven and a third. Christian Yelich scorched a two run double to right center in the first inning. And a little bit wide, ball four. Second walk issued by Bowers. Snaps a string of seven in a row set down by the Indians' right hander. Arkea in the driver's seat tonight. Indians with four 10 game winners. Bauer looking to join that club if he can get a victory here tonight. You know, you look at Trevor Bauer, he started the year out of the bullpen. Then they brought him in uh, in that uh, Detroit game, I believe, when Carrasco got hurt. And he has the second most innings on the staff right behind Corey Clover. Tomlin is third. You know, and then you're looking at Carrasco and then Salazar. I don't know if we can show that graphic one more time, but. The statistical aficionados have made a believer, I think, out of most of us, that the, the win for the pitcher is a stat that you kind of take with a grain of salt, maybe. But if you looked at that graphic, all the teams on there are all good teams. Yeah. So if you've got that many know, guys getting that many wins, chances are you've got a good team. Yes, you have to have a good team. You have to pitch deeper into ball games when you're a pitcher if you want to get wins. And you have to have a good offense, you know, that scores some runs. Yeah, first place, first right, place. They're all in the playoff hunt. Every one of them. <laughs> they're all in the playoff yeah. hunt, you know, right there. I mean, awfully close. So it, it, it does mean something for, uh, for a pitcher to go out there. And there's times you have to win games two to one. And there's also times you're going to win games six to five. You know. But I understand, and I think sometimes you maybe have to go through a season like we did in 05. When you've got a Kevin Millwood, he had nine wins. So you understand that the, the and led win, the league in the ERA. Led the league in the ERA. We knew how good a pitcher he was. If you just looked at his record, you'd say, mm, "Yeah, he was kind of so-so." That no. wasn't the case. Though. A lot of things to. Oh my goodness! Bauer steps off alertly. Is the tag in time? Yes, it is, and the inning is over. Yelich looked like he had a great piece of larceny, and except Bauer crossed him up. Caught him red handed.
bottom of the third inning. Francisco Lindor with a seven game hitting streak now after he doubled in the first to lead it off. And a breaking ball. Boy, all of a sudden the fastball has been put in his back pocket. A heavy dose of off speed pitches now from Jose Fernandez. He'll still have to use it, but you know, he's got to take them off that fastball. He's gone to that changeup more so. And there was a good fastball located well. And he gets ahead one and two. Rick, it's early in the game, but do you view this as maybe a is this a victory for the Indians that they've taken him sort of out of his game that he's had to adjust? Well, make adjustments. That's the key to the game. Can he stay and continue to make adjustments? Now he's trying to make his to the Indians, and the Indians are going to have to just go ahead and keep going. Well, Lindor unloaded on that breaking ball into the corner. He's on his way to second, and he's got a leadoff double, and he was down in the count. One Again. and two, and I told you this is one of the best guys, the best pitcher in baseball at putting hitters away when he gets to two strikes, but not with Lindor. Twice he has been able to come back and get him. He gets the, the breaking ball this time. Frankie kept the hands back beautifully. That's five doubles already. And the home run. They don't have a single. Well, Rick, he has never allowed six extra base hits in a single game in his career. He has now. How about that. And we're in the third inning. Yeah. They've uh, they have had a great game plan coming out here against him. He's making adjustments. They should feel good about themselves because now he's the one that's out of whack. He's the one that's feeling a little. He's trying, yeah, trying to figure out what do I have ball. to do to work get right. something to work here. He's not used to pitching like this and breaking out so many off speed pitches. I wouldn't think. You know, we don't get a chance to see him often. It's, it's tougher when you don't see a guy to, to hit him like the Indians are hitting him like they own him. Santana sucks one right back through the middle, and the Indians take the lead. Number 68 for Carlos. Well, Carlos is going to get fined in Kangaroo Court. It's the only single he had so far, but it drives in a run. He threw him a low fastball, and he didn't miss it. Boy, these guys have really put on a great display of hitting early in this ball game against Fernandez. They were down three in the first, and they've scored two in the first, one in the second. They come back one in the third. They now have the lead. Still nobody out here. Indians with seven hits already. Wait, you, you just mentioned a moment ago. We're not, we don't get a chance to see him that often. The last time we saw him, he threw a career high eight shutout innings and struck out 14. I know it. I down mean, it in wasn't Florida. even a contest. Yeah, down there. What was it? A 10 nothing ball game, I believe. It was, but he was so good. Yeah. It didn't matter. They could have scored one run and it would have felt like a blowout because uh -huh. the Indians just had no chance against him that day. Well, I, I did mention he's a different pitcher on the road. He's, uh, yeah. he's unbelievable at home, but still, his arm is as, uh, as good as you can get. But the Indians, I think, are in his head a little bit right now. They were since the first inning after they gave him three. He should have felt pretty good about himself going out there. You know, he was a first round draft pick, 14th overall in that 2011 draft where Trevor Power was number three. Three and one for Ramirez. You can almost feel the frustration emanating from Fernandez. Yeah, he's he's emotional on the mound. And he walked him on a changeup. He started him off with a changeup and a ball and walked him on the changeup. 
Now, let's let's take a look at all the hits. There's a fastball up and away they hit. There's one down and in that he crushes, and Frankie gets his double. Now you turn the page. Naquin gets a high fastball, takes it to left center. There's another high fastball taken. All those were extra base hits, and then he's starting to make an adjustment. He goes to the breaking ball, double. He throws that fastball down to Santana, who got a single. But uh, seven hits, six extra base hits. Still doesn't have an out here in the third inning, and the Indians have a one run lead. Juan Nieves is, is, is there, but it, all the talking was done by Fernandez and Mathis, but with their gloves and masks, you can't tell what the heck they're saying. But as best I could tell, it seemed pretty animated. Now, whether it's just the frustration from Fernandez, or maybe Mathis is trying to get him to go a different way and he's resisting that, I don't know. I'd be curious. It'd been great to be a fly on somebody's shoulder right there. Lonnie Bunts. Fernandez goes to first. And the sacrifice is completed. Santana to third, Ramirez to second. Well, that'll bring up Abe Almonte, who's swinging a hot bat right now. He's got a seven game hitting streak. Two for four last night with two doubles. Grounded out his only time up. Tonight. Let's see what the Marlins do. They're going to play it back. I okay, was watching yeah. down in the dugout. They say, hey, we're going to have to score. We don't want to base it to score two or, you know, a little broken bat single. Keep him back. He's a strikeout guy. They trust he can strike him out. And I don't uh, disagree because they know they can score or they believe they can. So uh, let your guy get his uh, strike out here or go after it. He's been out of the stretch every inning. He is in the full windup right now, and that's not a bad idea. Second time tonight I've seen Fernandez get that breaking ball called. It looks a little low, but he gets the call. I'll take a look at it at our Indiana Wesleyan University pitch tracker. Right there. Looks like he feels a little bit better. Now he's out of the stretch. That was weird. He went from the first two pitches out of the full windup, and after I was just mentioned some, he goes back into a stretch. But he gets the strike with the fastball. I don't know if somebody told him anything from the, the bench or what. Do not know. Hood settles under it, tagging, and coming home is Carlos Santana, and the Indians' lead is now five to three. That's a very good at bat by Almonte. You know he did his job. You're looking to elevate a ball. He had two strikes on him, so he's just trying to stay alive. But he gets the uh, sacrifice fly, and that is the 50th of the year for the Indians. 50 sack flies leads the league. The only team that trails is the Washington Nationals who have 54 as a team. If you're Ty Van Berkeley, you have to feel pretty good as a hitting coach when guys are doing those kinds of things because yeah, you know, absolutely. They're, that's situational baseball. That's all you teach. They're going to intentionally walk Tyler Naquin here with first base open and Roberto Perez on deck. They have. I'll tell you what. They've got Fernandez upset. To say the least, the way they've swung the bat off him in the first three innings, how many times is he going to give up five runs? And you're intentionally walking the number eight hitter. Well, they feel like if this is a National League game, they're, they're going to face their pitcher now, so that's why they're walking Naquin. But Perez got a double and an RBI in his first at bat. High fastball, he shot it to right field. And he jumped on it. Yeah, he didn't try and do too much with it, just hit it where it was pitched. Drove in Naquin. Look at her. Fernandez is out there flipping the ball up in the air on the mound. He's, he just flipped it up about six, seven feet high. They have him totally frustrated. 
and collectively this is kind of a frustrated Marlins ball club. Injuries aside they've gone through a stretch where they've lost so many one run games it's almost you almost feel like it maybe broken their spirit a little bit because they they went from being in position to really have a good chance of winning a wild card to almost falling out of it now. I mean they're they're still alive don't get me wrong. Yeah they're but alive their but chances have drastically diminished with what they have on the disabled list so as far as their best players going on you, you just can't you know that's the grueling schedule of a major league season. You stay in there for so long and then sooner or later you, you just can't hang with them. according to baseball prospectus Arch, on July 31st Miami's playoff odds were 40 percent now they're down to 6 percent according to baseball perspective there you go. and a lot of that has to do with who you're playing you know, they've got to play the uh, National League but they got the Nationals and I'm sure they're so in their division early. they've got the Dodgers coming up. They've got the they've got the six left with Washington. They've got the Mets still to play. Two one and a good off speed pitch. You saw Perez kind of nod. Yep, yep, got me there. Fooled me with that one. Two two with two on two out here in the third. Got him. Good off speed pitch slider gets Fernandez out of further trouble. But the Indians have scored in every inning. Two more for the tribe. They now lead it five to three. Enjoy it, Gold. We're stay tuned later in the game for Miller Time, brought to you by Miller Lite. Beautiful night, 72 degrees at game time. Big crowds, a lot of them still filing in. Huh? I don't know that we have a sellout, but it looks like we're going to be pretty close. A lot of folks still filling in in the upper deck. JT Realmuto rounds one to short. Our team mobile greater coverage of baseball. Miguel Cabrera, I tell you, Arch, that was impressive last night. I saw the score. I saw Kansas City went ahead, and I thought, oh, good. And then the next thing you know, my phone buzzed. The Tigers win. Like, yeah. What happened? They came back. It was a good ball game. 7 6. No way Davis hadn't pitched him in, what, over a month. Hit the first guy he faced, and it went downhill from there. Well, Detroit's uh, playing very well. Derek Dietrich. 
He was a huge Indians fan growing up. He remembers vividly the 97 World Series loss. How hard it was watching it. Pops up here and there are two down. Not the first time he's played on this field. One of the cool yeah. things they started that hardball classic. It's a benefit CIC. Right. And he got to play here. I in remember him when he was in high school. Yeah. He came out to the to the remember the home run hitting like, contest. They yeah. had he yeah. put on quite a show that day. Good for him. He's he's off to a pretty good start to his career. Destin Hood. The team he could have played for is kicking off uh, against USC at some point tonight. They may already be underway. Alabama. He was recruited by Nick Saban. Oh yeah. And it was a he said it was a hard decision to make. Even though he said when it got down to it he said I asked my dad have I ever really wanted to play football and his dad said no. Baseball was always his love since the, he was said it was since I was four years old as long as I can remember. This is what I always wanted to do. Well, uh, he made the right choice. But he said, I mean, he said, I'm not going to lie. There was a time when, you know, Alabama won the national title a few years ago. He was in rookie ball with the Vermont Lake Monsters. Yeah. And he said, I started <laughs> thinking, Lake did I rake to make the right the decision? Crimson tie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a little different. Swing and a miss. He tagged him. Got him with the tag. Strikeout number two for Bauer. Marlins go one, two, three. Indians lead it five to three. Game is brought to you by Buick. And we're going to take a look at the Major League strikeout leaders. Max Scherzer, look how far out in front he is. Yeah, he's a machine. Madison Bumgarner pitched today, and that was a great game. Giants held off the Cubs 3 2. We didn't see Chris Archer at his best, but obviously he's put together another good year. And Justin Verlander. He has. Look at this. Wow. Guy. Coco Crisp jumps on that pitch. And he's two for three in his return to the drive. I'll tell you. He hit the uh, breaking ball his last time. Or got, he got him with the changeup. So he starts him off high fastball. And Coco's ready for it. So the Indians, three out of the four innings, have had their leadoff man aboard. But after in the second, after the first out, Naquin doubled. So they have had pressure. Uh, Fernandez every single inning. You know what I like about this game for Coco tonight is that he was asked the other day about his great batting averages here with runners in scoring position. And he said, I don't know. He said, maybe I'm maybe I'm bearing down more when I get in those spots. He said, but I hope not because I should treat every at bat the same. And tonight we're seeing good at bats leading off innings. Yes, yes, we are. Two for two leading off an inning. One ball, one strike. Jason Kipnis clobbered a two run homer in the first. 
He struck out to end the second. Got in on him, popped him up. Hood makes the grab, one away. Francisco Lindor brought the American League's best home batting average into tonight's game. He doubled in the first, and then in the third, he did it again. Yeah, he, he sat back and hit a breaking ball. He had the fastball in his first at bat, breaking ball, both doubles. And uh, you know, you get used to seeing that smile. He enjoys himself, but if you played like he did, <laughs> and he does, uh, you, you better smile How because you're you good. Fun? I know it. He's got a third hit. He's got more of those than anybody in baseball. Why 22. not? Two. 22 now for him. Three hit games, and he does it in his first three at bats. He's not messing around tonight. You know, he was drafted in that 2011 draft as well. He was number eight. You have Bauer number three, and Fernandez is number uh, 14. So, and you know what? Andre told us earlier in the year that Frankie knows everybody that was drafted. Mm -hmm. You know, ahead of him and, and in that draft, and it looks like it tonight. Santana he rifled a single right back up the middle in the third inning. The Indians first six hits tonight off Fernandez were all extra base hits the most he's allowed in any start in his career since then all singles three of them. Yeah, but they, they've still they got him for the most hits this year number on uh, number nine. It's the first time he's given up nine hits this year. Gave up eight to Atlanta in a start. The Chicago Cubs. And that's it. The Indians have nine and they're in the fourth. Santana bounces one to first. Dietrich goes to second for one. And the return throw. Nice play. Was in time. It was hard to tell who was on the bag. Dietrich was evidently. Joe West signals a double play. Terry Francona wants to take another look. We'll quickly do it as we go to break just to make sure. Yeah, he looked like he was on the base. Brought to you by Levin Furniture for the best deals on furniture and mattresses. Shop Levin's. By your Northern Ohio Honda dealers. And by the Cleveland Clinic. Access anytime, anywhere. Trevor Bauer goes back to work here. And that looked like a great pitch. 
for some reason called a ball. Jeff Mathis grounded out his only time up. The Marlins collected three hits and scored three runs in the first inning. They have not. They don't have a hit since. The only base runner was a walk. To Christian Yelich in the third. Two and one. Mathis has collected a hit in 11 of the last 13 games that he has started. Pops this one back our way. Two two. Broken bat line at her second one away. In between innings, Jose Fernandez talking to Jeff Mathis. I don't know if he's looks like he's not happy maybe with the umpire. I don't know. He's just full of frustration. Well, he was looking at his catcher talking about a target. I don't know what he's talking about. Very animated, but he usually is when he pitches. The day he pitches, but it's not going his way. They've got him talking to himself. Echevarria pops it up. Kipnis there again. Two down. Well, Indians baseball is live with the MLB.com at bat app. You can uh, stay connected all season with radio broadcast, video highlights, stats, news, and more. Download MLB.com at bat, the number one app for live baseball on your smartphone and tablet. D. Gordon is 0 for 2 has struck out grounded out. Big curveball and he drops that in. 0 and 2. Kansas City leading Detroit 2 to 1 there in the fifth inning at Kauffman Stadium. In the American League East, Tampa Bay is doing a number on Toronto again. They beat him 8 3 last night. And they're up big again here this evening. Got him. Bauer strikes out D. Gordon. One, two, three, go the Marlins.
pitches have been made by Jose Fernandez through four innings. 52 of those have been strikes. And he starts the home half of the fifth. Low ball one to Jose Ramirez. Ramirez grounded out on the first. He walked in the third. 2 and 0. Oh. Bullseye with a fastball, two and one. Jose Ramirez came into tonight, ninth in the league in batting average, fifth in doubles, eighth in stolen bases. He has had an incredible year. Tapping the short, Echeverria will throw him out. In game recap brought to you by your local Toyota dealers. Christian Yelich clobbered a two run double in the first. Marlins jumped out to a three to nothing lead. Two batters into the bottom of the first. Jason Kitten has cut the lead to a single run with a two run homer. The Indians tied it in the second, took the lead in the third on the Carlos Santana RBI single. They have since added a run and lead it 5 3. Here in the bottom of the fifth. And Lonnie Chisinau taking a strike. Lonnie has sacrificed his last time up that ended up getting the job done. He moved, he moved the runner, sacrifice fly. Gave him that insurance run, making it a 5 3 game. Yeah, I wasn't sure in that situation if that was a a play that Terry Francona put on, or if that was just Lonnie, you know, 0 for 14, maybe just not feeling it right now. Let me get the runner over. Well, what did we talk about earlier when you're facing a good pitcher? The opportunities you get, you better take advantage of them. So that's an opportunity. You move the runners with nobody out. You know, that's like you, you play it like a playoff game because you have the lead, move it over, get one more. Execute. Yeah, a little executions. Thing. Two down, and Abraham Almonte, who drove that run home with a sack fly in the third. Runs on nine hits, no errors, five left so far for Cleveland. Three runs, three hits, no errors, one stranded for Miami. Get outside. One and one. Well, oh, that was a nice changeup. Monte thinking fastball. It looked like a fastball and it just never got there. He has that assortment of a four seamer, a two seamer, the change up, the breaking ball. All quality pitches. And when that fastball is 97, that change up at 88, that's really good hitting speed. But when you're geared for 97, it, that yeah, 88 it, must feel like it's 48. And it moves down on the way. It's like that circle change, it's got good movement to it. Comes a breaking ball. And he strikes him out. He'll have to throw to first. He does. The Indians go one, two, three for the first time tonight. But they lead it five, three through five.
Fucking hell. Jan Gomes on the comeback trail last night at Double A Akron. He went two for three, a double, drove in a run, scored twice. So that's really good news for Gomes. And hopefully Jan can get behind the plate and work himself back into shape, get him, get back here to the big league club. Maybe another week or so. That would be nice. Ichiro leads off the sixth, and it's 2-0. and He singled his first time up. And with that hit, if you include the hits he had in Japan, he now has 100 more hits than Pete Rose did when he broke Ty Cobb's record. 1,292. When Pete retired, he was at 4256. That was that's the all-time major league hit record now. And I don't know that anybody's I, I don't know. No, no one will ever. You never it. say never, but boom, no one will ever I don't break know. it. They won't play long enough to do it. To break it. Because they won't be able to afford to pay the guys that could get that many hits. Ichiro draws a walk on a close pitch. And the Marlins get their leadoff man aboard. Third walk for Trevor. And they will bring up Martin Prado, who walked and scored in the first, grounded out his last time up. What a situation it has to be, though. For a guy like, say, Christian Yelich, who's on deck right now. Even Martin Prado, who's not a rookie, but certainly has plenty of major league experience. Right. JT Real Muto, Derek Dietrich. To be a young player, if I'm a young guy on this team, I've got Ichiro. Now I know I know there may be some translation issues you have to work through, he but knows how to who can talk hitting all day with this guy? And guys. you got Bonds. And you got my coach. hitting coach is Barry Bonds. Right. Right back to second. Kipnis to Lindor. There's one on the first double play. Just Bauer gets the two for one ball with Trevor Bauer needed. And you know Bauer's been very good tonight. They hit the ball hard early off Trevor Bauer, and then he had one curveball right off. It looked like his chest, but it was his glove. He said fine. He steps off the mound, picks Yelich off after he walked him to get the final out of that inning. And uh, the curveball's been around. He gets the double play ball. So he's been up for the occasion. Three strikeouts. Yeah, he's been very focused, very determined. Even with that rocky beginning. Yes. The three run first inning, boy, they came right. The offense came back, and he's been a different guy. You know, when they tied that game up, or even got him the two runs, because he went back up and he's put zeros on the board ever since. And they don't have a hit when you look at it since that first inning. Yelich pops it. Left field. Almonte inning over. Middle of the six. 5 3 Cleveland.
have your friends come on down to the district. $13 district ticket includes your first drink presented by Sports Time Ohio. It's the best deal in the ballpark. You can't beat it, but you can only get it online. Indians.com slash district ticket. Tyler Naquin takes a breaking ball for a strike. Tyler doubled and scored in the second. He was intentionally walked his last time up. Another breaking ball. Yeah, he followed it up with a dandy. There's the fastball, but up and away. Just a teaser. Back to the breaking ball. Tyler, one of those guys, you see where that pitch was? He could still get enough of it, hit it hard, and hit the screen in front of their dugout. Down and in. He picked that ball up off the ground. Pulls that one just beyond the dugout. Had some folks ducking over there. This next pitch will be number 100 for Fernandez. No action still in that Miami bullpen. He got him to chase. Boy, he stayed patient, but eventually went up out of the strike zone. Fifth strikeout for Fernandez. 67% well, of his pitches have been strikes tonight out of the 100 pitches. They just uh, they did not miss fastballs early. They made him change his whole approach to pitching, throwing great and in incorporating that change up more so than I think he wanted to. Now there was a great fastball, but early in the game, that fastball was up uh, elevated. And they got after. Yes, they did. They said they were going to be aggressive. Got in on him, popped him up. D. Gordon, two down. It's Miller time, brought to you by Miller Lite. Coco Crisp in his first game back in an Indian uniform, first time up, leading off the game, jumped on a pitch, doubled to left field, and would score. Last time up, pulled a pitch in the right field for a single, so he's two for three. In his return to Cleveland. I have a feeling he's going to see some change ups and breaking balls in this at bat. First fastball, first strike. There's the change up. Hit right up the middle with two down here in the sixth. You know, I don't disagree with the call. Uh, it's the execution and the location. They wanted the fastball in and they threw it away. And that's why Coco got it. He started a fastball, change up, slider he missed with. He wanted to go inside with a fastball. He missed away. And Coco didn't miss. He got his third hit of the night. So he is three for four. Boy, what a night. Nice comeback, Coco. And he's aboard with two down for Jason Kipnis, who homered in the first. Since then, has struck out fly down. Ten hits for the Indians now. That's a season high for Fernandez as well. Giving up 
Never gave up more than eight. Yeah. This has been a very good offensive night and approach to a very good pitcher. And you see Jason Kipnis past Toby Harrell. At 67 in the number two spot. Jason's had a great year. Driving the ball, career high in homers. He should get a career high in ribbies. He's been very consistent hitting the ball where it's pitched. Defensively, he's been very good this year. Yes, he has. He's worked very hard on his hands. That fastball in there, it's three and one. Last night, <laughs> that's automatic. Yeah, he went anyway. Even if it was close, they were going to call it. All right, so full count. Coco Chris will be off at first. Dietrich drops behind him. And Kipnis shoots one right back up the middle. Coco flying around second on his way to third. The Indians at the corners with two down. Down to Andre. Well, Francisco Lindor has another three hit night, and he's one of the best in the league at doing it. And I kind of try to get inside his mindset of how he does it every night. He says, I erase what I have done in every at bat. He goes, Obviously, I know what I've done. He goes, But I don't want to get caught up in the last at bat. I want to look ahead. And he goes, And any guy that gives up after he gets one or two hits, he goes, I don't want that guy on my team anyway. I want as many. He goes, I'm greedy once I get one or two. I want as many as I can possibly get. No yeah. doubt. Good hitters get greedy. They sure do. When they get one, they want two. When they get two, they want three. And this is how this guy has been 22 three hit games this year. Now, on the Avis out for one last chat. The next time he talks to Fernandez, it'll be in the dugout, either at the end of the inning or when they make a pitching change, because he's just about out of bullets. Mike Dunn, the only left hander on the staff for the Marlins. Is getting loose. Lindor with three hits on the night. Coco Crisp has three hits as well. Lindor has 22 three hit games. Coco, that's his fifth. Gives you an idea just how special the year has been for Lindor. How do you like that? Carlos Bayerga, whose jersey yes. was handed out to the fans tonight. And it's a four hit night for Lindor. Scoring is Coco. Kipnis goes to third. Goes into the photo bay. Another run comes home, and Lindor will go all the way to third. Well, Coco has had 22 three-hit games, but it's his first four-hit game of the year. And I'll tell you what, it's a rocky night for Fernandez. As there's the breaking ball away, he finds the hole. Boy, well, I'll say he puts everything out of his head because there's hit number four. In comes the run. And Kipnis going to third hustle on the throw from Ichiro. The ball gets by. Where's Fernandez? In the middle of the diamond. He never left the mound to back up anywhere, whether it be third base or home plate or anything. And that's going to be his night. So the air will be charged to Ichiro. Right. But the mental air is that's on Fernandez. Exactly right. And the Cleveland Clinic call to the bullpen has been made for left-hander Mike Dunn. Fernandez shown the door after five and two thirds and the Indians in command will be right back.
wheels came off for Fernandez early. And he never really was able to get his emotions in check here tonight. And the Indians tattooed him. Mike Dunn, 39th time he's been in the ballgame this year. He's had a good campaign. Three up, one down, a 2.70 ERA. And he'll be on to face Carlos Santana. Oh, I thought they were going to give Lindor third, but I guess he wasn't. He wasn't past second base. I thought he had gotten to second when the throw went into the photo bit. Hey, uh, photo base. So he's back to second base. And with two down, Santana goes to work. Outside, off the glove, but not far enough to advance for Lindor. Yeah, you know, the Indians' first six hits off Fernandez were all extra base hits. Five doubles in the home run. The last six, all singles. But he gave up 12 hits tonight. And boy, they, they really had a good, great approach. Good night offensively for the tribe. Inside, he missed. Santana shoots one five. <laughs> Nick Lenz at third base sitting down there. That ball was hooking. He just stayed put and he knew he didn't have to make a call. Coming at you, big fella. There it is. He was thinking, oh, let me just duck it. Santana over to the Indians dugout. Now the two two. Good eye, full count. Seven runs, twelve hits, no errors, five left for Cleveland. Three runs, three hits, one air, one stranded for Miami. And Lindor hoping to get home from second if Santana can deliver here. Low ball for another walk for Santana, number 78 on the year. He's the vitamin man, Arch. One a day. <laughs> yes, he is. Well, you can get priority access. To this year's postseason tickets by purchasing 2017 Indian season tickets. Plus, you'll get access to tickets for opening day, team shop discounts, tribe rewards, and much, much more. Just visit Indians.com postseason for more details. In the dirt. Dunn coming in out of his eight pitches, six have been out of the strike zone. Two on, two out. 
Ramirez swings through a fastball. He makes the catch and avoids a diving Echeverria, and everybody's okay. Indians score two more, and we'll go to the seventh, 7 3 Cleveland. Cleveland Indians baseball is brought to you by Ford Built Ford Tough. By the injury lawyers at Elk and Elk, proud partner of the Cleveland Indians, call 1 800 Elk Ohio. And by Adventure Chrysler Jeep Dodge Ram. Seventh inning, and the Indians have scored seven. Bauer has only allowed three. In 13 career interleague starts, Trevor Bauer's ERA is 243. JT Real Muto, who had a single in the first, rounded out his last time up. Ramirez. Down to Andre. Well, when you think of Don Mattingly, you think of him as a New York Yankee or being with the L.A. Dodgers as a manager. And yesterday when he first got here, he was talking about being in Cleveland and it being different for Miami to be here. One of the Miami uh, writers kind of made a joke about Cleveland. And before they could finish, he stopped them and he says, no, this is one of my favorite cities that I ever come to. This is one of my favorite ballparks. This is the three ballparks he loves. It's this ballpark, Baltimore and Pittsburgh. He says it feels like you get a part of the city when you're in these ballparks because of what you see when you're mm -hmm. at these ballparks. Uh, and I think the writer will never make that joke again about Cleveland to Donnie Mattingly because he says he loves it and appreciates the people of Cleveland and how they respect the game. Donnie baseball was a tremendous player who did it the right way. That's the thing I'll always take away from watching him. Yeah, unfortunately, you know, the back problems that he had maybe cut his career short mm -hmm. but he was a great player for a long time and he played you know you think of the Yankees being good every year or so it seems well he wasn't he played on some of the, the down teams and he, I don't think history. he ever made it to the playoffs till his final year yeah that was the uh, 95 year when they lost to the uh, Mariners Randy Johnson company. Buck Showall. Yeah. And he was just one of those uh, consistent, smooth hitters year in, year out, you know. Could play first base. Yeah, he was a, a, a total all around good ball player. 
Want to send out some birthday wishes today. Paul Zwick of Louisville turned 89 on Thursday. Yeah. Celebrated with a 82 at uh, Pleasant View in the golf course. Nice job. And Dan Dadich, 64 today. Happy birthday to you. And I would like to send out our condolences to the Ferrone family. John Ferrone passed away uh, two nights ago, and he was a police officer. That yeah. was a security guard, a guard at the old ballpark. He and his brother Gus were there for us. So, Marilyn and the family, Ferrone family, our thoughts and prayers are with you. There, Dietrich pops one sky high. Nate Quinn in center field will make the catch. Derek had about 60. Members of uh, the St. Ignatius baseball family and friends who are here tonight. Yeah, to why watch wouldn't him. you? Yeah, why wouldn't you? At least he got off the list and able to play here. You and know? you believe me, that was important for him. You know, you go on the DL, you don't know if you're going to get when you're going to get healed up. But for him to be able to come back and play here, because when you're in Miami, you don't know how many times you're going to exactly. get a chance to come back you, and play. In you're Cleveland. absolutely right. A well, special night for him. Even though to this point 0 for 2 though he did get an RBI his first time up with a sack fly. Destin Hood pops one up foul that's going to get out of play. Talking before about his decision to turn down a chance to play at Alabama to pursue his baseball dream and he said I. I've had people say, "Ah, you should have played football and this and that." He said, "Yeah, I stuck it out, and now I'm living out my nice dreams." What a play by Bauer! He does it again. The cat. Wow. He's had a fantastic night in all phases of the game, leaping high in the air and snaring a hit away. With Jimmy Hanlon Sunday nights, our PGA Pro will look at this weekend's tournament action. More specifically, he'll talk about his own charity golf tournament that just took place out at Little Mountain Golf Club, and we'll have some of the highlights from that. Presented by American Eagle Mortgage and Varmint Guard Sundays, eight o'clock on Fox Sports Ohio. How did your group fare when Jimmy's out? Uh, we were ten under. I thought we played pretty good. It was a windy day. It was beautiful. Golf course was in great shape. Little Mount was nice. The greens were rolling. First time I've ever played in a scramble, my group was over par. Really? First time? We were a little short-handed. <laughs> <laughs> Lonnie Chisenhall going to lead off for Cleveland. He gets a new pitcher for Miami. And he fouls it back. Lonnie 0 for 2 with a sacrifice bunt. Brian Ellington, the new pitcher. 
Never faced the Indians before. Shoots one, right field near the line, long run for Ichiro, but he glides over and makes the kick. One away for Abraham Almonte. By the way, the 12 hits for the Indians tonight represent a career high allowed by Jose Fernandez. And the fact that it was in just five and two thirds innings is even more impressive. Yeah, they their game plan was outstanding tonight. They did a, a great job, one through nine. Chop to second base. Nice play by Gordon. Two down. Well, it's going to be another Sugardale Dollar Dog Night next Friday, September 16th. The crucial matchup against the Tigers. Uh, that'll be the 16th. I'm sorry. You can enjoy Dollar Dogs all night long. I thought we we're going to be here for two more weeks. <laughs> I was going to say, wait a minute. Next Friday, I no. don't think we're here. Next Friday, no, we're not. We're out on the road. Dollar Friday dogs after in Minnesota, that. huh? Well, we'll have to pack them with us. <laughs> They're with us all year long anyway. Just go to Indians.com if you want your tickets. That's the 16th of September. We don't get them just all night long. We can have them all week long. My goodness, I got just got to think of that's the last home stand of the year. Yeah. That's that starts in fact. That Friday night will start the final home stand of the season. It sure is. Tyler Naquin fouls one back. Yeah, because we spent uh, quite a bit of time. We had 20 out of 25 here at Progressive Field, yep. and then went out on the road, and uh, you know, one more home stand to go. Although we're here through Thursday, after tomorrow's ball game with Miami, they'll move on and uh, we'll host Houston in a four-game series. Talk about Houston. Their schedule. Think about it. They're playing Texas right now. They got beat again today, so they're pretty much out of that divisional race. They're hoping for the wild card, but now they come to Cleveland for four. They play Chicago for the three. Yeah, the Cubbies. The, the Cubs for three, and then go back and play Texas. Mm -hmm. So their next ten games, it's not going to get any easier for them in the wild card. They've certainly got their work cut out for them. Tampa Bay beating Toronto 7 to 4 was 7 to 1. Kansas City still leads Detroit 3 1, seventh inning in KC. Smash to short. Echeverria throws out Nake when the Indians go in order. We'll go to the eighth. Cleveland 7, Miami 3.
telecast is presented by authority of the Cleveland Indians and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Cleveland Indians. Look at that. Three hits, three runs in the first inning. Since then, nada. Now they had six hitless innings for Trevor. You talk about settling down. His offense came back and got him some runs, and he just settled in nicely. We said somebody's going to have to do it, and it was Trevor Bauer. Side corner. That's a couple of 2 0 change ups I've seen Trevor Bauer throw tonight. Try to hold up, did he? Joe West says he did. Look at it from the side, and he certainly did. Was able to check it. Andrew Miller is ready. If needed in the pen, full count. But I mean, Bauer, he's still shy of 90 pitches. Yeah. Well, he's warm, so you know he's coming in at some point in time. Right at Kipnis. One away. Arch, Indians pitchers have been under siege on this homestand. <laughs> yeah, I remember. Ouch. Holy smoke. All in one game. Luger took his turn. He made a couple of plays. This is uh, pitchers' fundamental practice. And I'll tell you, he was lucky tonight there. In some cases, it's pitchers' get out of the way practice. Yeah. Look at <laughs> they were talking about how high he jumped after that ball. Yeah, they've been good. They've been the breaks have been going their way, and they've uh, pitched very well. Echeverria is the guy that scorched that ball back off the glove of Bauer in the second inning. Look at what he's done after a 23 first pitch inning. That was uh, impressive. Strike except Rippinger. Bauer was ready to, he, he was walking. He said, That's Okay, go ahead. I'm going to go. Of course he is. Not even close. <laughs> Big curveball and he fouls it off. You know, sometimes, I mean, we see it happen a lot. Everybody around thinks it's a strike except the guy that's calling it. And you just have to wait and see. <laughs> uh, that was funny. So Perez isn't putting a sound on. Uh, he's not putting a sign Bauer down. Shaking his head. And so is Perez. They were both shaking their head no at each other. Swung on and missed. He chased one in the dirt. It's because Bauer wanted to come back with that. And he throws him out. That's the fourth strikeout of the night for Trevor Bauer. And it's our Circle K strike out of the game. Yeah, he'll get him to chase it into the dirt. Perez just keeps it right in front. A nice job. He'll let him take, get himself out of the batter's box and throw to first. And with two down, here's D. Gordon. My guess 
guess is this might be the last hitter of the night for Bauer with Miller up ready in the pin. Left handed hitting Ichiro Suzuki on deck. Bauer closing in on 100. And he shoots it to deep right. That goes Lonnie Chisinau makes the catch. What a performance by Trevor Bauer after allowing three in the first. The next seven are scoreless. In a run back in the second inning, one for three on the night. And then you've got Coco, he's got a three hit night, trying to join Francisco Lindor in the four hit club tonight. Fastball at the knees, outside corner, strike one. Rondo pitched an inning in last night's game. He got the single, walked a couple. Breaking ball, got him. One away. 27,483. The attendance here tonight at Progressive Field for the middle game of this three game series. We'll wrap it up tomorrow with uh, a unique start time. We'll be uh, coming to you tomorrow with Indians Live at 3 30 and our first pitch at 4 o'clock tomorrow with the uh, air show going on downtown. Yeah. The Blue Angels go off last. I think at around three, three fifteen. They go to just about four o'clock. I saw them when I was coming in today. I did loop the loops downtown. I know. I was like, you know, I better pay attention to the road, but they're hard to keep. Hard everybody's looking at it. Everybody's driving, and everybody's <laughs> looking when you're coming uh -huh. in. Everybody on the side of the road. It is. Yeah. It's incredible. Then I got out of my car, parked, and was walking up to the gate to the ballpark as Coco Chris bounces to second. Pulled him off the bag and Coco safe. There's where the speed of Chris gets the Indians a base runner. And the second error of the night for Miami. Yeah, that's just a mistake there by Gordon. He had the plenty of time. I mean, he it was a routine play. He fielded it cleanly, but the throw brought Dietrich off the bag. There it is. Looks it into the glove, throws it down sidearm, and that ball goes high and wide. But that's what happens when you run down the line. 
every time. You never know when that's going to happen. You just never know. Well, you got to love that too. 36 sure. years old. Absolutely. Still doesn't take anything for granted. Now Jason Kipnis, who has two hits on the night, including that big home run in the first inning. So anyway, I parked. I'm walking up to the ballpark. I meet this family from up from Tennessee. They had just gotten done talking to you. You oh, must yeah. have beat me in by a couple of minutes. And we're we're trying to converse as the Blue Angels are roaring overhead of the ballpark. I saw him. I, I talked to him on the way in. They say they watch us all the time from yeah. Tennessee. They were in for the weekend. I said, well, good luck. We hope you see a win. And hopefully they will. They're three outs away from it. And Effie Ogano wants to talk to Mathis, and we'll take a look at our Pat O'Brien playing the game first inning. Coco Crisp doubled the lead off, and then Jason Kittness on a fastball down and in. He took it out. Well, look at he's shaking his head. He thought he made a good pitch, but I'll tell you what, Kipnis hit a good pitch, and that was the response runs that the Indians come back, and I'll tell you, they they haven't stopped after the, you know, the first three in that lineup have been unbelievable tonight. Nine for thirteen. Runs. Yeah. Way outside. One and one. Dono's got the Fernando Rodney cap on. He's really got that thing cocked off to the side. Hey, look at that. It's, it's almost. No, he just took Rodney's head and put it on his shoulders. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the one on. And he misses way outside. Two balls in this car. I just I can't feel comfortable. I don't know how it does, but I guess it works for him. What a pick by Mathis. Very nice backhanded pick. I told you this guy walked a couple last night. He has very good stuff, but uh, you know, inconsistency, I think, like a young pitcher. Third time up with the Marlins this year. Up and down. And the walk. draws a walk. So after striking out Perez, the air and now a walk. Two on, one out, and Francisco Lindor a perfect four for four on the night. Yeah, and that's Frankie's first four hit game of the year. We told you he had uh, 22 three hit games, never a four hit game, but he got that last one. And it actually pretty much got Hernandez out of the game. The throw, he was just frustrated. And what a night! Has his batting average up to 319 now. And a foul back. A career high four hit night.
It's amazing you you know with 22 three hit games you would have thought somewhere along the line there's got to be a four hit game. Yeah. With that many three hit. Not that it's easy to do. I'm not saying that. But. Well the way he gets them and, and you know his approach to him you would think he would have mixed one in. I, I agree. But this won't be his only one I'll tell you that. Question is is there a five hit game. If he sees a strike. That's off the glove of Mathis and the runners both move up. That takes the double play out of order. The way he reacted on that pitch I almost wonder if he was crossed up or if he just didn't pick it up well. I guess he didn't just didn't. Well this guy's all over and you don't know he hasn't caught him a whole lot I'm sure. But when you go it's up. And he's got to come out of that crouch and. You don't see it when yeah. it's up there and it gets caught in that uh, thumb. He didn't catch it cleanly. So now a 3 1 count. Infield in. 3 1 pitch. And he walked him. So he's reached safely five times tonight. And the bases are loaded. For Carlos Santana. And now Dustin McGowan has to get up in the Miami bullpen. And Juan Diego is making yet another trip. Santana drove in a run back in the third with a single. He's one for three on the night. Picked up his 78th walk of the year in the sixth inning. It's just one of those situations where you'd love to get that fifth run in terms of the diff run difference. Yeah. Make it 8 3. You always like it, yes. I mean, when you can. They did it one other time. Uh, who were we playing right before this? It's they, Minnesota. Yeah, it? yeah, they came in and they had, they loaded the bases. A grand slam would have tied it. But they that's when Davis stole third and Kipnis got a free RBI and a sack fly to give him a five run lead. So yeah, if you're a manager, you feel better if you have a five-run lead. That's for sure. Let's see if Santana can deliver the sack fly or perhaps a big fly and really blow it open. Takes outside with a fastball. They already have a sacrifice fly on the night. That was El Monte back in the third. It gave him 50 as a team. Slowly chop back to the mound. They go home to get the fourth there. The first, not in time. So the base is still loaded, but now two out. Well, Santana hustled his way down the line to. Keep the inning going. Mathis has to come out. He's going to throw. He's on the bag and he was safe. He did beat it out by a hair. I'll tell you what, here's the question, Arch. Was Mathis's foot on the plate? Take a look here. Was it on the plate or not? I don't know. I don't think it is. Well, no. From that angle. No I'd way. Say no. That's going to cost the Marlins. You know, his heel, if it was down on the ground, was, but he wasn't on his heel. No. I think Barney is going to get the Indians a run right there with the eagle eye. Mike Barnett in charge of the Indians video replay. He was right on it. Well, yeah, that last angle we looked at, it didn't look like that heel was on the plate. Not when he took the throw. No, you're right. He reached out to get it and it brought that foot further away from home plate. This shouldn't be this shouldn't take long. Should not take long. Yeah, it, it's pretty clear that that heel was up and the foot was not engaged with the plate when he took the throw. And here. Well, thought we had a decision. Yeah, they're just asking Joe where he's going to dinner after the game.
perhaps Mabel's. Michael Simon's new joint over here. Yeah, I, I think it, this it is doesn't look it. like the toe is up, uh, even on the front part of that right front part of the plate. His his, his heel That's looked like it was on right it. There. And then it looked like when he went forward to catch the ball, it raised the heel, and the heel came off the plate. All right, here we go. Nice call. Nice challenge. The major league average is 50% on getting calls overturned when they go to challenge him. The Indians are well above that for the year. Well, what would that is that just a fielder's choice or is there an error thrown in there? It's a great question. The wait for the official scorer's decision. Ramirez pops it up. Kipnis not going to try to tag here. And now there are two down. That's a good question. I, I suppose they could just rule it a fielder's choice. I, I don't was it an error? No, I mean he it could have been a double play, but it, it went they from do. they do charge him with an error. Okay. Yep. So that's the second error in the inning. I mean, it was a routine play. He's got to make sure his foot's on the base. That's like throwing a ball to first base when you're out. You know, you're out, yeah. but you don't keep your foot there, so it's an error. It's just. Yeah. Base is loaded, two down. Lonnie Chisholm, all the batter. Anybody that's ever played baseball, home plate's different. You know, there's no there's no edge you can stick your foot up against. Like if you're a first baseman, a second baseman, you've yeah, got to be on matter. that plate. You just keep your foot on the plate. Yep, it's plain and simple. First, Dietrich takes it himself and ends the inning. An unearned run for the tribe makes it a five run spread as we go to the ninth. To the ninth inning, couple of firsts tonight as we welcome you to the corner along with Jensen Lewis, Al Pulowski, Francisco Lindor. First time in his career, four hits. First time this year, Jose Fernandez has given up 12 hits. Well, the way that Jose Fernandez was coming in tonight, snaps 14 innings of straight scoreless baseball, and the Indians needed a response. Not only did they need that, they needed Trevor Bauer to get right back up on the horse. He did that seven straight hitless innings after three runs in the first. Now can Bauer get the complete game? 
Stay tuned. Matt and Rick have the call right now. Join us for Indians Live, brought to you by Conrad's Tire Express and Total Car Care after the game. Guys. First pitch misses inside to Ichiro Suzuki for ball one. Andrew Miller was up. He's ready if needed, but Bauer trying to finish what he started here tonight. Seven no hit innings since the first. He's two walks shy of being perfect since that first inning. Yeah, he has settled in beautifully. He, you know, they hit the ball hard. They were hitting his off speed pitches. Maybe the location wasn't quite there. Up the middle, a true seeing eye single for Ichiro Suzuki. And the Marlins get their leadoff man aboard here in the night. Do you realize he's faced the minimum since the second inning or since the first? He has not faced more than three batters in any inning since then. When he uh, walked a batter in the third with two outs, Yelich was thrown out trying to steal. When he walked a batter to lead off the sixth, Suzuki was doubled up when Prado bounced into a twin killer. Now Suzuki with a single to start the ninth. And Martin Prado takes up high ball one. Power just over the 100 pitch mark for the night. Fly ball. Naquin calling for it. The center fielder is there. One away. Up comes Christian Yelich, and that's going to do it for Bauer. Terry Francona is going to go to Andrew Miller. He has made the call. So Bauer goes eight and a third here tonight. But the fans wanted to see Bauer finish. Well, they do. But complete games are a thing of the past. Yeah. You got to get Miller in here. It was a great start. There's, he has nothing to hang his head about. He settled in beautifully in the crowd appreciates it. That's why they wanted to see him finish with a great start. A little wave to the crowd. Nicely done, Trevor. Well done indeed. 8 3 Cleveland. We'll be right back. Brought to you by Mazda. Bauer, match Fernandez. That was one of the keys, and he was better than Fernandez. Period. And the Indians jumped on the fastball of Fernandez they didn't miss it. and forced him to make an adjustment early, and he could tell he wasn't comfortable, and they got to him big time. He allowed a career high 12 hits tonight. Now it's Andrew Miller on to try to. 
finish this game off for the Indians. Christian Yelich looks it's low and away. On ball one strike Yelich two run double in the first he has walked and flat out since then. Popped him up on the infield. Lindor calling for it just shy of the mound. Miller, Miller called down. for it originally. <laughs> <laughs> He's a lot taller he would have caught it before it came down. He could have boxed all those guys out. Yeah. JT Real Muto to the plate good matchup here this guy's been on a roll. Swinging the bat very well. Best road batting average in the National League. Singled his first time up. Already four hits in the first two games of the series. And it's outside ball one. This crowd of just over 27,000 up on their feet now. Popped him up in the air, right field. Here's Lonnie Chisenhall. And the Indians win again. The tribe has won five in a row. And they go to a season high 22 games over 500, 78 and 56. They beat the Marlins by a final score of 8 to 3. Trevor Bauer becomes the fifth Indian starting pitcher to win 10 games this year. He's now 10 and 6. Losing pitcher Jose Fernandez goes to 13 and 8. The Marlins have now lost eight of their last 11, and they are back to 500 at 68 and 68 on the year. So this was one of those ball games coming in. You figured it's going to be a dog fight. You're going to have to fight and scratch and claw for every run and maybe win a low scoring game. And we had a shootout right out of the gate, but the Indians were the team. Doing the damage offensively. Yeah, you uh, you were scared in the first inning. Bauer gave up three, and you're thinking, okay, Fernandez is on the mound. But boy, did they come back and answer in a hurry. I mean, a double off Coco, his first at bat as an Indian since coming back, doubles, then the Kipnis homer, then another double. They fought right back. They kept adding on. They had a great offensive game plan, fun game to watch, and Bauer hung in there like a champ. 8-3 is the final. We'll have some final thoughts from Progressive Field right after this. <laughs> 